Is the embryo a human being, or is it something more primitive that has the potential to become a human being sometime in the future? This has to be the single most important question that demands an answer in the abortion debate. Even Supreme Court Justice Harry Blackmun, who wrote the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision legalizing abortion in the United States, acknowledged this when he said, if this suggestion of personhood is established, the appellant's case, of course, collapses, for the fetus's right to life would then be guaranteed specifically by the amendment, meaning, of course, the 14th Amendment. Unfortunately, Blackman famously sidestepped the entire issue when he said, we need not resolve the difficult question of when life begins. When those trained in the respective disciplines of medicine, philosophy, and theology are unable to arrive at any consensus, the judiciary, at this point in the development of man's knowledge, is not in a position to speculate as to the answer. In other words, he was saying important people don't seem to be able to agree, and we're just judges, so we don't really need to answer the question about whether the unborn are full human beings with moral worth, deserving of legal protection. We'll just make abortion legal. And if anybody ever finds out in the future that there really is a human being in there, well, then they'll have to overturn our flawed decision. Not only was this an appallingly dangerous legal precedent, it completely ignored compelling philosophical and biological evidence that human life does indeed begin at sperm egg fusion, otherwise known as conception or fertilization. Let's break this down. There's an important principle in logic that helps to objectively establish what is real and what is not real in the world. It's about 2,400 years old and is sometimes called the principle of objective evidence or the principle of publicly verifiable evidence. It holds that if a theory or an explanation or a definition is to be considered valid, it ought to have evidence that other people of reasonable intelligence can verify. Sounds rational, right? I mean, if I were to just arbitrarily assert something without giving any publicly verifiable evidence, you would be logically free to arbitrarily deny it. For example, if I said, it's a baby, and you asked, well, how do you know? And I said, I just feel it deep in my heart. Well, the depths of my heart are not really publicly verifiable. And even if they were, my personal feelings are subjective and have nothing to do with the reality of what's being observed. But there is objective, publicly verifiable evidence that we can make use of in the abortion debate. You may have heard of the famous French geneticist by the name of Dr. Jerome Lejeune, who discovered that an extra copy of chromosome 21 was responsible for the condition known as Down syndrome. In the 1990s, Dr. Lejeune provided objective evidence that the full human genetic code is present in the human embryo from the moment of sperm egg fusion. And not just a human genetic code, but a distinct, individual, unique, and unrepeatable human genetic code. It is biologically and genetically completely distinct from its mother and its father. As Dr. Lejeune wrote, to accept the fact that after fertilization has taken place, a new human has come into being is no longer a matter of taste or of opinion. The human nature of the human being from conception to old age is not a metaphysical contention. It is plain experimental evidence. What's more, the human embryo at the moment of sperm egg fusion contains all of the information necessary to direct its own development in the way that human beings develop. This would be impossible if that embryo was not a complete, organized, whole human being. All of the best scientific and medical research confirms that the appellant's case has indeed collapsed and exposes Roe v. Wade to be one of the greatest travesties in modern legal history.